Hey guys, today we are going to talk about eight magic cards. I guess nine magic cards that are more expensive than you would believe. So Elspeth Sun's Champion, this card hit under $5 at one point in time and now she is at $10. So if you have your Elspeth lying around, maybe you played it during standard, maybe you got it from a collection, it's time to put them into your trade binders. This is the real deal. She's very good in EDH and sees some modern play in tier 2.5 decks. So surprisingly, this is a $10 card again, and more surprisingly, it is a $50 foil. Yes, a $50 foil, and this is coming from a card that actually has a foil, a dual deck foil of her. This is considered the superior version, and for EDH purposes, you want the original foil. Fantastic card, and definitely one to keep your eyes on if you can find it in foil. Next, we're going to talk about Piffing Needle, Piffing Needle from 10th Edition, which is a regular $4 card, but a $22 foil. So the multiplier in this card is kind of insane. And I believe all nine cards we're going to talk about have insane multipliers on the foil. Biffing Needle is a very good card. It takes solves pretty much all the problems. I know a lot of people are saying that the new Piffing Needle is better, but there is a huge difference between one and two. One is significantly better than two. So I love the card and I love it in foil, and it's possible that you can find these relatively cheap because I would not have realized this is a $22 foil. I definitely wouldn't have realized Elspeth was a $50 foil, although original printings of Planeswalkers tend to be pricey. Okay, so those are kind of interesting, but the next foil is crazy. Uh, the next foil is Yagamauer's Hollow, which is on the reserve list. There's not many foils on the reserve list. They tend to mostly be judge promos or in this case, Urza's Destiny, Urza's Legacy, and Urza, Urza's Saga did not have foils. Let me correct that. Urza's Saga had a foil lightning dragon and that was the pre-release foil. And then they had some test foils, but for the most part, it didn't really have any foils in it. So whenever you have a land, and the land does not come in play tapped, and it's legendary, yes, the price will be insane. It is almost $500 for a foil copy of this reserve list card. That's insane. It's definitely a good card in EDH, but I had this card, not in foil, or I don't at least remember it being, but I had this card, and it was... It was okay. I don't remember it being it, it being in high demand at the time. All right, let's talk about another foil, which is a Arena promo. This one is a forty dollar foil, and it is. It used to be incredibly common. I used to see these all the time in trade binders, but via time, it has just it has stood the test of time where less and less copies are available. Now, this card will probably be played in standard, therefore the limited editions of it, just like how the Glacial Fortress and the Rootbound Crag and all those cards, Sun Petal Grove, are going up in price slightly, because not although there's more copies of them now, they are now in a format where they the most people play and not all the people who are playing had had old copies of it so Doraz is one of those cards where i love the comic book version but this is an equally great version in foil where it has seen a huge price tick almost doubling in price just due to the fact that it's back in standard i mean opt it foil foil opt is kind of the same scenario okay conspiracy take the crown is a fantastic set in the mythics like I love the set in terms of value. I just don't know why boxes are still $78, which is what 
Boxes are still $78 and that's a crazy price for a box to be at because it cost a store $78.50 to buy it. And $78 includes shipping. So Conspiracy Take the Crown, I keep expecting it to go up in price, but it has not. A foil version of this is $78. Wow. Wow. It pretty much makes back the entire box if you can get one of these in foil. There are very few cards. So if you view this as the, um, let's view this as an expedition, right? This is better than most expeditions. It straight up buys you the box. Most expeditions, like maybe you have one out of the whole bats of 25 that can break even at. This one is pretty much the real deal. Okay, Huntmaster of the Fells. I had not realized he was 950 and his foil is $38, which is a lot. So he has a very healthy multiplier. And I don't remember, I don't, haven't seen him being played anywhere. Um, he, at, in standard, at one time, he was one of the most dominant cards. But a $40 foil, I feel like people just are making tribal decks that, that, that can't be modern, right? I don't imagine that they were using this guy in modern because there's so much better cards at four, even at these colors, that you would want to play. Great card. I mean, it's a fantastic card. At one time, it was one of the most dominant cards in Standard. You know, when I think of how fun Innistrad, Dark Ascension, Absin Restored was, that was a ton of fun. I used to play Delver, Invisible Stalker, and then put the Rune Chanders Pike on him and then just go for t go to town. Oh, and then Gitaxian Probe, where I believe there was Mana Leak was legal at the time. That was truly control magic. All right, so what if I told you this card is 61 cents in 9th edition and $30 foil? It's pretty surprising. I'm pretty sure this card is banned in EDH. Um, someone correct me if I'm... It would be too good if it was unbanned in EDH. It seems too good. But anyway, this card is one of those cards that just is a great win con. If your opponent has no creatures, then they die. And that's really good. Uh, and it's a $30 foil. So 7th edition foils are pricey because they are the first core set with foils. 8th edition is pricey because it's old. 9th edition, I did not realize there was cards where the regular card was $0.61 cents and then the foil was $30. But there are. And that is quite... Mm, how should I say this? 7th edition foils were not always the price they were at. Some of them, the good ones, were the price. Like, Bird of Paradise has always kind of been there, but the majority of them were pennies on a dollar, and now everything on that is expensive because people view it as a collector's item. Talking about foils that are have huge multipliers, this one is a $1 regular card and a $14 foil, and I used to see all of these these all the time. Not in foil, but just regular cards. Time of Need, the legendary mechanics and champions and betrayers and all those cards that really highlight legends, they are doing extremely well right now. Um, and it makes sense, EDH will always be EDH and a tutor is always gonna be a tutor. So I think this is actually very low. $1 for this card is quite low, I believe, because you can grab any legendary creature card and it goes into your hand. So going into your hand is very good because you don't lose card advantage and you're not, I mean, it's just way better. I would much rather have a demonic tutor than a vampiric tutor, right? Sylvan tutor is insanely expensive. Yes, it's limited and it's, you don't pick whatever you want, but it's good enough. I wanna talk about this card in great detail because I had made a spec on the card and it turned out fine. This was a very good spec to make, and it wasn't this card in particular I made a spec on. It was the, what was it called? The Invention I made a spec on. And I, it turned out that this card, five colors, will always be EDH Tribal. Great card, $38 foil, and I will, 
I, in another video, I'll talk more in detail about exactly how I came to the conclusion that this card would be worth a lot of money, uh, even though it's recent and there is a high printing of it, there is a even higher demand of it. So when I saw the very strange colors, especially the five color dragon deck, and they say this was going to be reprinted and it was only reprinted one deck out of the four, I knew that it was time to buy into it because at that time it wasn't very, it wasn't that much money. I think you see that little dip there. It was probably $7 or something. And great card will always be a good card. Uh, power level is there. Flexibility is there. And EDH doesn't really care that costs free mana. Anyway, that is it. Bye guys.